show you how to make this little bracelet. Um, I got this idea. I was making the icicle cross um, earrings and the stage where you just make the cross and then put the crystal on was so pretty as I was watching the video playback that I decided it would make a really neat bracelet. I had it in my head today so I just decided I had to make it. I'm not real happy with my clasping because it's not the color of clasp I would like to use. However, it was just kind of thrown together today. I designed this on the fly in front of the camera. One thing that I want you to know right off the bat is that you need to leave a tail when we start this project. I cut the tail off and I do not at one point and I do not leave a long one anyway. You need to leave an 8 to 12 inch tail on your um, first unit. This is what it looks like on. Otherwise, you'll have to sew through, tie on like I did in the video to um, put your clasping on. Um, sometimes when I'm designing on the fly in front of the camera, things like that happen. But this is what this looks like. I think it's really pretty, and I hope you will enjoy making this with me. So let's look at what it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project, you're going to need 5mm bicone crystals. Now, you can try a 4 or a 6, finagle it in there if you'd like. It doesn't work as well as a 5mm. 5mm works the best. A 4 or a 6, you may need to finagle it a little bit. Um, you, you'll just have to use some creativity to get it in there and make it look good. However, a 5mm bicone crystal, you don't have to finagle if it it's in perfectly. I know they're not as common as the others, but it is what it is. They do work the best. Then 11 OC beads. This is a Toho. It's um, galvanized aluminum permanent finish Toho. Then I'm going to use a little toggle clasp. And like I said, I don't think this looks the best with those seed beads, but it is what I have at the moment. I don't have any brushed silver. I have the stainless steel look. And my brushed silver is still not even the right color, so um, that's what I'm going to use. Anyway, you will also need some... 8 pound nanofill or some 6 or 8 pound fire line. 6 probably better than 8 pound fire line because you're going to be sewing through these beads a lot. 8 pound fire line is pretty thick. Now 8 pound nanofill is smaller. It's more like 6 pound fire line. So I would recommend 6 pound fire line or 8 pound nanofill. You will want to put on a full two wingspans to start your project, size 10 beading needle or a size 12, either one will work. And you will have to extend or tie on somewhere during the process. This is a very thread thirsty stitch. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna start this just like we did the earrings. Now, this isn't going to be an exact match to the earrings, but it is going to be the basic stitch that I created um, to make the earrings. So I'm going to pick up four of the um, 11 F seed beads onto my needle like so and I'm going to bring them down to the end of my thread and we're going to start a ladder stitch just like we did in the earrings and so we're coming up through the first two beads from the tail side hold on to your beads and your tail and pull the thread through until the two other beads lay on top of your first two beads, like so. Now we're going to sew back through all four of these beads. We're coming out here. We're going to go into these two. As you do this, if you put your thumb and your finger together and kind of push, you can control your tension pretty good and make this nice and neat. Now we're going to come into the top set here. So we're coming out of this set. We're going to go into the set where the tail, it, tail is and pull. And this is just your basic ladder stitch. If you do not know the ladder stitch, this is basically all you need to know. But if you do, then you probably can scooch ahead and not have to watch this part. So now we have two sets of ladder stitch. I'm going to make six sets. I will show you a couple more times 
how to do this. So we pick up two onto our thread, we're, or our needle, we're coming out here, we're going to go into the opposite side from which we're exiting, and hold on to your beads, pull the new beads down to them, go back up through the new set of beads, like so, hold on to your beads, pull tight, go down into the previous set, we're going to sew through each set twice just to make sure they're nice and neat and tight. And then up through the set you just added. Let's do this one more time. Pick up two 11 0 seed beads onto your needle. You're coming out of this side. We're going to go into this side of the beads. Then reinforce. Since we're only going to make six sets, I'll go ahead and make all six of them with you, and then we'll move on to the next step. So we have four sets. We're coming out of the set above the set we just added right now. We're going to go back down into the set we just added, and then add two more. The reinforcement part of this is important. You might want to use, um, make sure you... <laughs> I just flung it all the way across the room. Yay! Um, you want to make sure that you're not using really big threads. So you might want to use a six pound fire line if you don't have an 80 nano fill because we're going to sew through these quite a bit. Now I'm going to go back into the set that I just added and reinforce it. Go back into the previous set. Pull tight. Now this can be really thready on the sides if you don't um, if you don't keep your th tension nice. You can really get a really thready look on the sides of your ladder stitch. You're going to see some regardless. There's nothing you can do about that. But that's just the nature of the stitch. However, you want to keep it as neat as you can. So I have five sets. I'm going to pick up two more. And then I'm going to go back through the two I just added, pull tight, go through the two previous to that, pull tight, and then up to the th through the two that I just added. Now I have six ladder stitch, just like this. Now I am going to sew down the ladder stitch three um, sets. So I'm coming out of one. Here's my second one, and here's the third one. So I'm going to go into the second one here. I'm going to get just a tiny bit closer just to make sure everyone can see. And then we're coming, I just went through the second set. I'm going to go into the third set of ladder stitch right here. And I'm going to pull through. Now I'm going to change this just a tiny bit from the earrings just because sewing through the earrings making the cross, it could get difficult um, sewing through so many times. So I'm going to try to modify that a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. We're coming out of this third set right here. We're going to go into the fourth set, the set right next to the one we're coming out of. We're going to pull these beads down and then we're going to pick up two more beads, like so. And we're going to go through the, we're coming out of this set here, the fourth set, we're going to go into the third set. And we're going to avoid the beads on top of the other side. So just go through, whoops, and I got it anyway. Just go through the ladder stitch here and pull. Now, we're going to work one side first. So we're going to work this side of the ladder stitch. We're going to add two more sets. So we're going to go through these two here. <laughs> Maybe. We're going to go through them. They want to lay up like a herringbone stitch and we don't want them to lay like a herringbone stitch. So we're going to go through both of them like this. And I'm going to hold on to them like so. 
and then I'm going to go back up through these two here. So I'm going back through my ladder stitch and I'm going to pull the, the two on this side into a ladder stitch also. Because I'm afraid if I make the whole side over here um, my ladder stitch and then come back through, these two might be too tight to rearrange. And when you pull them like this, like I said, the holes want to go up. They want to lay like a ladder or like a herringbone stitch and we don't want them to. So now we're going to come through both of these two. and then back through the center ladder stitch. And I don't know if I actually saved any stitches doing this or not, but I'll back through here and then back up through the two beads that you just put on. Go through both of them. and pull your thread through, like so. Now we're going to add two more sets of ladder stitch to these two beads here. So I'm going to pick up two beads onto my needle, like so. And I'm going to go back through both of these beads and pull tight. Then I'm going to sew through the new set Then I'm going to sew through the previous set and back up through the new set, just like we've been doing, just to secure everything very nicely. Get my tail out of there. And then pull tightly. And I'm going to add one more set. So I've got two beads. I'm going to go into the opposite side I exited from. I'm going to go through my two new beads. I'm going to go through my two previous beads. I'm going to scratch my eye. Hang on. Okay. And then I'm going to pull my thread through, just like so. Now I'm going to come back up through my end set just to make sure it's nice and secure. Now we have to sew all the way back down over so that we can go this direction. So we're going to sew back into our beads. So I'm coming out of this set here. I'm going to go into the set underneath it. Pull my thread through. Then I'm going to go through this set here. Then I'm going to go back through the center set and just the center. Don't go through the beads on the other side because you'll pull it back into herringbone shape. So just go through these two beads and then we'll go up through the two on the other side together to retain the shape we want. So now we'll go into these two here, which they want to lay funny. So it takes a little bit to get your needle through the first time and that's okay. Just finagle it through. And just arrange as you do this so that you keep a nice shape to your ladder stitch. Now we're coming out of these two beads and we're going to add two more sets of ladder stitch on this side. So pick up two beads and then again, like I said, finagle your way through those two beads there. They get a little strange angles. And then add your next set of ladder stitch. Sew up through and secure it. Make sure that you hold it tight as you're doing this. I know that my fingers are over it, but that is the way that you will control your tension and keep everything neat. Go back up through the set that we just added and then pick up two 11 0 seed beads onto your needle. Coming out of this side, we're going to go into the opposite side. And then back down through the new ones. And my thread just knotted. See if I can pull it through. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to secure the set. Again, because my thread got kind of goofy, so. There. Now, you will see that you're going to have eight sets of ladder stitch on this side. So I want to get close. I'm going to show you what I mean. So we started with these six sets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we added, when we went this way, we have now made eight sets. So one, two, three. We're going to count the two center. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We're coming out of the top of the strip with eight in it. We are going to go into the, this is the second row of um, ladder stitch, second set, right underneath where we're coming out, right there. And we're going to start adding some crystals. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a crystal onto our needle, like so. I'm going to back off just a little bit. And we're going to go from this second set of ladder stitch to this top set here. When you go through this top set, because it is the tail set, it's going to pull the ladder stitch apart a little bit. And we're going to fix that. I'll show you how. So let me get close again. So now I'm coming out of here. I'm going to go into, because I went from the second set to the top set of ladder stitch with my crystal. Now I'm going to go into this second set here. You can let your crystal fall. That's okay. You'll pull it back up as you pull your tension through. Then go back through this top set. If you do not do this, your ladder stitch is going to fall apart right here where your tail is. This is securing your um, ladder stitch is what it's doing because we didn't tie a knot there. Now, when you pull your crystal through and you pull your tension, make sure you do not pull it so tight that it rolls your ladder stitch on top of itself because it can do that. Just pull enough to where it's secure, tight, but you're not um, distorting the ladder stitch cross you just made. Now, pick up another crystal. You're coming out of the top um, beads here. You're going to go into the second row of beads here. So. You're going to go into the second set of ladder stitch in the strip of eight. Go through there. Pull the bead down. We can cut our tail off now too because it's going to be in the way. So I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to leave just a little bit so that I can melt it down here because um, that's a yicky lighter because of the fact that that will help it not go through the beads. It'll blob it, it'll knot it some. Now we're coming out of this second set here of ladder stitch. We're going to pick up our five millimeter bicone crystal and we're going to go into the top set here. And we're going to pull, make sure that it's nice and neat, but that it isn't bunched. Then pick up another crystal we're coming out of the top beads here. We're going to go into the second row of beads here. I do. Okay, and this is what you should have just like this. Now I'm going to back off because I'm going to get out of frame. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to, we're coming out of this second set here. We're going to go ahead and sew all the way around these crystals just to secure them. So you have to remember what, I'm going to get you a little closer. We're, you have to remember which sets you went into and, and go back into the same one. So we're going to go through this crystal. I just feel if we don't do this, it may fall apart. So let's go into, and plus using, Swarovski crystal. It's really precision cut and it's really sharp and it can cut your thread. Anytime you can sew through it twice is always a pretty good idea. So then we're going to go through the crystal or the top beads here. We're going to go through the crystal here. Then we're going to go through the second set of ladder stitch here just like we did originally. If it moves your crystals around that's okay you'll tighten it back up. Just don't move them and don't destroy them as you go through, but just 
if it moves slightly, you can straighten it back up. And we're going to sew all the way back down till we get to the bottom. Now, I don't know if we'll have to do this with every unit. I will figure that out as I go. I am designing this as we are doing this. Um, the idea was in my head from the set of earrings I made, and at work today, this just kept popping into my head. So I just wanted to do it on camera and uh, get it out there. So now I've gone all the way around all the crystals. I am going to go through these two right here, this ladder stitch, the second set. Then we're going to go into the top set. Now we need to make seven sets of ladder stitch, which that will make this one our eighth set. And so now we've turned it around. We started with making our six. Now we're going to start when we connect, we're going to make our eight set all our eight sets. We already have one set here. So we're going to make seven sets. I'm going to back off. I hope I was in frame through all that. But I'm going to back off some more because if I don't I will be out of frame as I get concentrating on this because like I said I am designing I'm not just showing you so I get a little involved <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to make our seven sets so we have this set here we're going to go into the opposite side from which we're exiting we're going to bring down two more 11 o seed beads we are then going to sew back through them and reinforce them just like we did earlier And back up through and then another set so that's our second set because we're going to count this one here one two we're going to make seven but we'll have eight all together so that's our first one this is our second one now we'll make our third one And then make our fourth one here. I wonder if you guys can hear the news on my TV. <laughs> Not very cheery news. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I almost messed up. Did you see that? Yes, you did. And let's see, so that's from this set right here. One, two, three, four, five. Go back up into this one. Six. Seven. Now we're making seven sets, however, we need eight sets, and I think I was counting the first one, so I may need to make one more. We'll count it again. So, let's see. So we're here. This little extra set here is the one we started in. So we're going to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yes, we need one more set because we need eight sets all together. So let's put one more set here. Whoops, that one needs to be secured. See, if you don't secure it, they'll just pull apart and then you can't work with it because as you sew through to put your crystals on and stuff, your ladder stitch will fall apart. So the securing part is very important, though you get a lot of thread in it, it, and it's difficult to sew through sometimes as you're doing your second and third steps, you still need to secure it. You just have to. Okay, so now we are going to sew up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So we are going to sew up, let me see from here. Um, we're going to sew up one, two, three. We're going to sew up three again. So I'm coming out of this set. So I'm going to go into the second set, the third set. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think we want to go through the fourth and the fifth set. Make sure that there's going to be the same amount on either side. This is our eighth set here, one, two, three, four. Yep, we're going to go into our fourth set. So just sew up from this bottom set, sew up four sets, so one, Count the bottom set, one, two, three, and we're going to go into four. So we're going to work in our fourth and fifth set here. Now we're going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads, and we are going to put them, we're going to, we're coming out of this bead here, we're going to go into the next set here. And again, we're going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads, and we're coming out of this set here. We're going to go back into the one we started in, avoiding the beads on the other side. Make sure you don't go through them because that will pull them into a herringbone stitch and we don't want the holes up and the beads tipped like a herringbone. We want to make our stitch, um, our beads side by side like a ladder stitch. So now we're going to go through both the beads here. And remember, they're kind of canted, so it takes a minute to get through both of them, like this. Then just sew through both of them, pull your thread through, go through the two underneath them again, and just those two, not the beads on top. And like I said, if you have to move them around a little bit, it's okay, because you can pull them back into shape as you tighten your tension as you pull your thread through. So, don't pull it so tight that you can't straighten things out. Now we're going to go through these two beads on this side. Like so. Then we're going to pull the thread through. Then we're going to go back through the beads in the middle in the ladder stitch. Go through the two on this side. So all we're doing is just trying to straighten them out so that we can do a ladder stitch again. So now I've got them straightened out. See, let's get just a little closer. And we're going to do the ladder stitch again, like so. So you just sew through your ladder stitch, putting them on. And then you're prepared to do, this time we're only going to do one more set because we only need six in this strip. We've turned ourselves around. Before we did two because we were making our long eight strip. But now we've turned ourselves around and we're working out of the eight instead of out of the six. So now we only have to put one more set on each side. So um, go ahead and Go through the beads again, so you're exiting here, pick up two beads, go through and make another set of ladder stitch. And then sew through it to secure it. And then up through the second one, or the previous one. And then back through the set that you just added. And just keep moving them around and adjusting them. They don't just go on there perfect. You have to make them perfect. Go back through the previous set. Now that's all secured. I'm going to sew into my ladder stitch again, avoiding the beads on the other side, which is very difficult to do. 
<laughs> because that one just wants to be in the way. Pull your needle through, and then we're still a little canted here like a herringbone stitch, so we have to come through it, straighten it out, and put another set of ladder stitch into it. So I'm going to go into these two little beads right here. I'm going to do them one at a time because they're not doing what I want them to do. Now I can pull them. Hopefully I can pull them side by side. They're really being stubborn. Okay, now I've got them side by side. So now I'm going to pick up two more and make another stitch of ladder stitch here. Go back up through the two you just added. Go back down through the two previous. Like so. And now you should have six sets through the middle, counting the two that we worked through. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're going to sew up. We're, we're coming out of this set here. We're going to sew back down into the two that we attached to, which can be rather difficult at this point. So just kind of finagle your way through it the best you can, trying to avoid the, the beads on the other side. I always have such extreme tension that sometimes it's pretty difficult to get through my work, but it can be done. There we go. Maybe. There we go. That was a tough one. Okay, pull this through. And you're just going to have to take your time and just work through them nice and neatly. Now we're going to sew up into the top beads here. So we're going to go through this set here because we're coming out of our middle set that we attached to. Sew through these two here. Perfect. Just perfect. And then into this top set here. And then we're going to add crystals. So we're going to pick up a crystal. And we don't have to secure it. This time it shouldn't fall apart as we sew through because we don't have our tail section there. These should be very secure. So we're going to pick up our crystal. We're coming out of the set of six out on the very end. So we're going to go into the set of eight, but we're going to go into the second set here. And pull the crystal through. Then we're going to pick up another crystal and we're coming out of the second set in the eight um, ladder stitches. We're going to go up into the outside um, the last stitch here in the set of six and pull the crystal into place. Now on this side you're just going to ha have to um, remember to go into, let's see, let me count it so that would help. So we have one, two, so you're going to go into the second stitch here. So from the center where you attached, you will count up two. So this is the center where we attached. We're going to count up one, two. Just make it easier. You're just going to skip one between the two sets here, but just give you a landmark to make it simple. So we're coming out of the top here. We're going to go one, two into that set. Because as the string gets longer and longer, you're going to kind of lose count. And then if you always go into the second one from the center beads, you won't lose count that way. All right, so we're coming out of the set here. We're going to go into the top set here and the crystal behind it if you can do it all at once. If not, just go through the set of beads like so. Let me see if I need to secure that. 
I don't really think I need to, but I'm going to. So I'm going to go ahead and sew through all four of these again. Just because, like I said, Swarovski crystal and thread can be a bad combination. <laughs> so I'm going to double my thread. So I'm just sewing back through the ladder stitches that I'm attached to and back through my um, crystals. So just back through these top here into this one here. Back through the ladder stitch here. And I'm just going to work all the way around. Until I can get back to the top. And then you're going to do the same thing to length. So what we're going to do is we're going to get through this crystal first and then I'll tell you. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go back through this second set here that we're attached to with our crystals. Oh, maybe I'm going to go through that set. What am I hitting? Oh, it's the crystal. Okay, I'll get past that crystal. All right, I'm going to pull through right here. And then I'm going to go up into this top set here. And then I'm going to make seven more um, seven more units of ladder stitch. And we're going to do exactly the same thing we did on these two. So if you need to back up the film and watch it again, that's fine. But make seven of your units. Go down to the fourth and fifth um units of ladder stitch from your seven and and of course it will be eight count this one here that you're coming out of as your eighth you will go down into your fourth and fifth units make two stitches of ladder stitch on either side going through those center units and then add your crystal and then again sew back up around to secure them and again do another unit of ladder stitch until you have you have 11 units. So I would say count the crystal squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And of course, this is going to make about a 17, a seven and a half inch bracelet. Of course, if you want a smaller bracelet, you're going to take away a unit or two, depending upon how small you want it. If you want a bigger bracelet, you add a unit or two, or you can always add more ladder stitch on either end and um, make it a little longer that way too. So just have your units and then add a little more on the ends. Now, the issue that I have, now that I've done this on video, I started to design it on video and I've run into a little issue with my design. Now normally, when I design, um, I will figure out that I've done this and I won't do it on camera. But what I did was I did not leave myself a tail to put a clasp on this side because normally I sew back through with embellishments. I don't think this bracelet needs any embellishment, so I'm not going to sew back through. So I won't have thread on this end to add my clasp. So I have created myself a little issue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add the clasp on this end, and then I'm going to tie onto this end. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that, and then I will add the clasp on this side. What I'm telling you is when you start this bracelet, leave yourself a 10 to 12 inch um, tail, and um, then you won't have the issue that I'm going to have. I will also put in caption to leave a tail at the beginning of the video. But like I said, I'm designing, so sometimes these things happen. Now I'm going to add my clasp on this end. I'm going to put a little toggle. Now I wish I had a different color toggle. This is, this silver is just totally wrong, but I don't seem to have a buffed silver toggle. Um, so I could put on this, I think this one might be too big. Yeah, that might be too big of a, uh, yeah, that one's too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little one 
and hopefully I can find, um, when I make another one, I can find a buffed silver to go with my seed beads, or I can use crystalline silver or something like that so that that's not such a difference. But it is what it is. So we're coming out here. Make me stop talking and get going, huh? Okay, we're coming out here after making our last unit and securing it, our crystal on. Now I'm going to pick up two 11 O seed beads onto my needle and I'm going to go through my clasp. I'm sorry, I'm going to pick up two 11 O seed beads. I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads, excuse me. So I'm going to pick up three 11 O seed beads and then I'm going to pick up my clasp then I'm going to go back down through the first two, or the first one, excuse me, the first 11 O seed bead here. I'm going to pull this down. And then I'm going to pick up two more seed beads. And I'm going to go through this side. And that's what my clasping is going to look like, just like that. We're going to sew through this several times and secure it, and then we'll be back, and I will sh show you how to tie onto the other side to make the other side of the clasp. Now, if you leave a long tail, you won't have to do that part. You'll just go over and put your clasp on. But if you did not leave a long tail following along with me, then you'll have to do this part too. Go ahead and secure this tie through or sew through your first unit a little bit and tie off with a half hitch knot. Now I got a question the other day how to tie off with a half hitch knot. All you do is you just grab a knot on your thread bridge, tie it, sew through, grab another thread bridge, tie a knot, sew through until you feel like it's secure. I don't do that on camera because it's just extra film and it's kind of wasted. Okay, so I have secured my piece, and this is how you do a half hitch knot. And for those that don't know, I'm going to go right on this little thread bridge here, and I'm going to go through. I'm going to make a loop and go through my loop with my needle and guide my thread down and pull a knot, just like that. Then I'm going to go back through here And then I'm going to go through this crystal. And you can sew around as much as you want. I'm just going to go into these two little beads here and this crystal here, and I'm going to cut my thread off, burn it down, so that I can show you how to tie onto the other side and make the clasp. If you watch this through first, which I hope you do, Watch it through and find out that you need to leave a long tail. It'll make your life so much easier. But if you didn't, then let's do this. So, I have just completely tied off here. I don't know if you could see me on the film or not. Now, we're going to go to this side. So, I've clasped this side. We're going to go to this side now. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to tie this on. Now, I don't like to tie on for my clasping. However, because I didn't leave a tail, I'm going to have to do this. It's better, always better, to leave a tail or to sew through with your working thread while you're doing embellishments and do it. But I don't have that right now to do. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into this thread bridge right here and I'm going to tie myself a little knot onto that thread bridge. So I'm just going to pull, and this is how a lot of people ask me how you tie on too. This is how you tie on. If you run out of thread and you are not using Fireline, you cannot e extend it, then you can do this. You will find a thread bridge somewhere in your piece, go a little bit back into your piece from where you ended and tie it off your last piece. Tie a knot and tie it a couple times. Back off just a little. Okay, so I've tied on there. Now I'm going to just leave that tail there and I'm going to go into 
the ladder stitch right here. Then I'm going to go up into this ladder stitch here between the crystals, which is kind of difficult to get to now because everything's so tight. But I'm going to do that. Then I am going to sew through this crystal here. Now you could have left a longer tail too to tie on here and then sewn it back in. I'm just going to cut it off and burn it down. But I'm going to sew through my piece. tail all the way. I'm going to sew up to here. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this tail. That's what I'm going to do. At least cut it down a little. Then I'll burn it down some so that it doesn't go through my beads because it'll blob and not go through the beads. Okay. Now I'm coming out of this crystal right here. I'm going to go into this second set of ladder stitch. I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to go through the second set of ladder stitch right here. The one between the crystals. And then I'm going to sew through this top ladder stitch here. Back off a little more. Then I'm going to go around one more time just to secure this because it's a tie-on. You could sew through it several times. You can go through the crystals. You can do whatever you want to really secure it. But I'm just giving you an idea here of how to do this. Okay, so now I'm tied on. I'm going to pick up two 11 -0 seed beads. I'm going to go through the other end of my... Or actually, I need three. Excuse me. I need three 11 -0 seed beads. I'm going to go through the clasp. Then I'm going to go through the top 11 0 seed bead, just like we did on the other side. Pull this down. I tangled it. Like so. And then I'm going to pick up two more 11 0 seed beads. Make sure I'm in frame here. And I'm going to go through the other side of the ladder stitch sticking out here. And pull this all down. Straighten it up. This is what this looks like. Now I am just going to sew back through this entire thing several times and tie off. So go ahead and sew through and then just like I showed you on the other side, catch a couple half hitch knots, sew through your piece a little bit Cut your thread off, burn it down, and we'll be okay, back. Okay, so I went ahead and secured my clasp and tied off, and this is what we have. Now, I wish I had a prettier clasp. Um, I'm going to have to go buy some brushed silver clasping, and I wanted to use a small clasp because I wanted it to be in the same shape, or the same size, basically, as my units. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't look too horrible. It's just... Not the one I would have chosen had I actually picked out one for this bracelet. If I had actually known that I was going to make a bracelet, I didn't even know that. It just popped into my head today, so I just decided I had to get on camera and do it. So I'm going to put this on my wrist now and show you what it looks like. It did turn out really pretty. and just, even though I don't have the clasp I want, it is a really pretty bracelet. Look at that. Let me back off just a little. And even with the clasping, it's not that horrible. It's just not the color silver I wanted. It's more of a blue steel color. And this is more of a brushed silver color with a golden tone to it with the toe hose. So, you know, I guess I could make myself something to go on there too. But I just wanted to get the actual design out of my head. So, here you have it. I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day.